We have some insane developments in AI and in this video we will explore an image to video model that can run on your laptop locally, a text to voice generation model that produces extremely realistic voice from just a single text prompt, a lip sync model which you can use to make anyone say anything. You just need an image and an audio file and the AI outputs a very accurate lip sync. Next up we're going to explore a model that can turn your 2D images into 3D assets which you can import into your 3D softwares like Blender and also 3D print them if you want to. Everything in this video is fully open source and you can run these models locally on your computer. I'm gonna show you how you can set all of them on your computer starting with frame pack. Frame pack is an efficient way of generating videos from a single image frame or from multiple image frames if you want to. This workflow utilizes an efficient next frame predicting method that renders multiple frames but gives different priority to different video frames. The more important frames use more GPU memory while subsequent less important frames use less and less of the GPU's memory. By compressing multiple frames this way the generation time is reduced. They have also implemented a really cool feature by which they reduce drifting in video. You might have seen an example where if you generate a really long AI video, it tends to distort a lot and drift away from what was happening in the very first frame. Sometimes it ends up changing the character fully. This method, this inverted anti-drifting option, it always refers to the first video frame as a reconstruction target so the whole video stays true to the very first frame and there is no significant quality distortion. Here you can see some 5 second long videos generated using a single image and as you can see this is just a 5 second can short each but as you can see the fidelity of the characters generated in the video is really good. You can see the facial expressions, the clothes and everything of character translate really well throughout the whole video length. But a 5 second long video is honestly not a really good uh, achievement. Uh, when 2.1 and Hanyuan and other video generation models can do that. If you scroll a bit down you can see that they have examples of 60 seconds long video generated using this method and this is where the anti-drifting method it really shines through. So if you keep following the videos through and through, you can see that the, throughout the entire length of the video, the character consistency remains same. Here's how you can set it up locally and run it on your computer. First up, you need to go to this link. I will have this link down in the description box. Open up this link and we need to download these models in our Comfy UI installation directory. For example, let's open this one and here you can see there are different folders for different models, clip fusion, diffusion models, etc. I have these models installed over here. So for example, if you go to clip fusion, I have all of these models installed in the relevant directories. After that, you can download these files as well. These are the standard Hanyuan image to video models. If you have downloaded them already, you don't need to download them again. But if you have not downloaded them before, you can download these to the Comfy UI models folder and under models you need to go to diffusion models and you need to place them over here. Once you have downloaded all of these models, we need to clone this custom node. So we need to go back to our Comfy UI uh, directory. Let's go back and Comfy UI and we need to go inside this folder. Here we need to clone that GitHub repo. So if you go back here, you can simply click copy over here and using terminal you can open up a new terminal and you can simply write git clone and you can just paste the link and press enter. Now this will clone, uh, this already exists for me because I have downloaded it but uh, using this you uh, you can clone this repo inside your comfy UI nodes. After that we need to install requirements so we need to move inside this folder that we have just cloned and here we have a requirements file so we need to install this file. And this will install all the requirements and dependencies inside uh, this folder. Once that is done, we have everything ready. We can launch Comfy UI now. Okay, so now I've launched Comfy UI. Now for the example workflow, you can find it in two places. First up, you can go to your Comfy UI directory and you, if you go to custom nodes, here in this folder, if you find the frame pack custom nodes and example workflows, here you can find the example. You can also go back to GitHub and you can go to this folder and you can download the example from here. Once the example is downloaded, you just need to to drag and drop the example here in Comfy UI. If any nodes show up as missing or if you see any errors, you can go to Comfy UI Manager, install missing custom nodes and all those missing nodes will show up over here and you'll be able to install them. 
One more thing, for some reason, Comfy UI does not automatically install this particular node on its own. So you will still have this issue. You can fix that by going to Comfy UI Manager, Custom Nodes Manager. And here I need you to install one node, uh, this one. So if you're facing any missing custom node error, it's probably because of this node. So install this and after that, uh, the workflow will be working just fine. Okay, so we have the workflow loaded up over here now. Uh, here you have the option to add a start image frame and an end image frame. So for example, you can see that here I have selected this as a starting image frame and this as the ending image frame. And I've run the model and the model has the ability to interpolate between the two images to create a video. And here you can see the model has beautifully interpolated between the two images to create a seamless video. I think this result is really cool. If you don't want to add an end image, you can bypass this sec uh, bottom section. So you can just click on these nodes and you can click this button to bypass these. So that way you only will have to add the start image frame. Some other parameters you can change here in the frame pack sampler. You can change the length of the video from here, total second length. By default, it's five. I have changed it to 10. You also have the option to change GPU memory pr uh, preservation. This one depends on how much VRAM you have available. By default, it's six. You can increase this if you want to, but we're going to keep it at six for now. And also make sure you have all the right models selected. So the models you've downloaded in those folders, they should show up over here. Once all that is done, you can add your positive prompt here in this section and you can add your negative prompt uh, over here. This conditioning zero out is basically like uh, a way to not add any negative prompt but if you want to add that you can remove this and you can duplicate this node and you can simply add a negative prompt over here and you can attach it over here to clip here you can add your negative prompt but we're not gonna do that we're gonna keep uh, it conditioning zero out I've added this as the input image and I've written a, a positive prompt over here and let's see how long it takes to generate the video. Uh, it's a 10 second video we're generating. Let's wait for the results. Okay, it took uh, 651 seconds to generate this video and here are the final results and as you can see, it's a 10 second long video and the video till the very end stays uh, true to the whole scene. As you can see, the clothes and the face of the woman are pretty consistent throughout the whole 10 second length of the video. So yeah, that's how you can use this AI to generate pretty consistent videos using an image. Next up, we have this AI that can clone voice and generate text to speech locally. And it's very small in size, only 0.5 billion parameter model. So it can run pretty seamlessly on your local machine as well. You can see that if you feed a voice to it, it can replicate a speaker's voice even without specific training data for that voice. If you want to clone an audio, you can also add subtitles for the reference audio inside the workflow. That way the model will understand it better and it will produce a more natural sounding pitch and audio when you generate a audio from any text. You can set it up in Comfy UI by cloning this Git repo or you can do it directly from Comfy UI Manager. We're gonna go that route. Okay, we've loaded up Comfy UI and to install Spark TTS, we can just go to Manager and we can install it from here. So we can go to Custom Notes Manager and here we can look for Comfy UI Spark TTS. And we have two options over here. I'm going to install the first one. I'm going to install this one. And once this one installs, we can restart Comfy UI and the nodes for Spark TTS will be available in our custom nodes. Once you have downloaded the model and opened Comfy UI, we can search for Spark TTS nodes using, uh, we can write TTS and all the nodes related to Spark TTS will show up. Uh, we have two right now. So this one is to clone any voice. So for example, we can input an audio file and I'm just going to insert my audio over here and then we can use this note to write any text and this model will try to clone the voice provided here in the input. And then we can simply preview that audio and we can save that audio. Now these are the default nodes inside Comfy UI. You don't need to manually download them. 
and then if you want this model to be more accurate whatever you're saying or whatever the user is speaking inside this audio you can write the subtitles of that here in this section so that way the model will understand your speech patterns better and the clone will be more accurate first up we're gonna try to generate an audio without providing the subtitle context just providing the audio only so here i've provided my audio Okay, so that was the reference audio and this is the message I want to be transcribed. I've run this model and this is the output we've gotten. Cloning a voice in Confuni is interesting. In this video, we are trying to clone a voice using some custom notes. The model is very lightweight and can run locally on your machine. Okay, so that was good enough. We can also change uh, the pitch and the speed of the audio from here and we can also uh, choose between different voices. There are some Chinese and English by default. And now I'm going to write the subtitle for the reference audio over here and let's see the difference. Okay, so I have added the subtitles for this uh, audio file over here and with this context added, let's try and generate this again. This is the result we've gotten. Cloning a voice in Comfy Boy is interesting. In this video, we are trying to clone a voice using some custom notes. The model is very lightweight and can run locally on your machine. Now, of course, the longer this audio file is and the longer the subtitle file over here is, the more accurately the model is going to be able to clone your voice. So that's how you can clone any voice locally inside Comfy UI. Next up, we have the Sonic workflow inside Comfy UI. Now using this workflow, you can do really accurate lip sync on any character. So what this model does is it takes a voice sample and an image and it does a really accurate lip sync of any character. You can see some examples over here. Run Comfy makes it seamless. Every word, every motion, perfectly in sync. Run Comfy makes it seamless. Every word, every motion, perfectly in sync. Run Comfy makes it seamless. Every word, every motion, perfectly in sync. So as you can see, the same voiceover was provided to all of these characters and this model does a really Run accurate lip sync. Seamless. So with this model, you get the best results when the character is directly looking at the camera. They can be looking slightly uh, towards the side, but generally you're going to get the best results when they're looking directly at the camera and when they're facing forward. To set it up locally inside your laptop, first up you'll have to clone the, the Sonic nodes inside Comfy UI. So go inside your custom nodes directory inside Comfy UI and you can clone this GitHub repo using this command. After that, you'll need to go inside this folder and install the requirements by using this command. Once you're done with that, you can go to this link and download these models and then you need to place them in different directories as explained over here. I have downloaded all of those files in my Comfy UI directory. So I'm in my Comfy UI folder and in models, we're gonna search for Sonic and here I have made the directories and I have placed all of those files. So once you've placed all of the models in this order inside your Comfy UI directory, we're good to go. Load up Comfy UI and drop the workflow. Now using this workflow, we can generate lip sync for any character. Uh, here you also have the instructions to download the model and the link to those models. Once you've downloaded the models, make sure everything is present in the right directories as well. So you don't uh, run into any errors. In this node, you need to add the voice. I'm going to remove this because this node expects us to add a link to the voice. I'm directly going to upload the voice, so I'm going to remove this node and I'm going to replace it with a different node. So we're going to replace it with load audio upload. So I'm just going to upload my audio over here. And this is the input image. I'm going to place an image over here as well. Okay, so I have added this image over here and I've added my audio over here. Let's click on generate and see the results. Today we're going to be testing Spark TTS node inside Comfy UI. We will use this node to clone and generate audio clips inside Comfy UI.
I think this result is really amazing and the lip sync honestly is spot on. The next model we're gonna explore is this Hanyuan 3D wrapper. Now this model takes a 2D image as an input and it generates a 3D mesh of that 2D image. It can also generate textures for that 2D image and then apply those textures onto the 3D mesh to create a color 3D model which you can import in any 3D software of your choosing. To download this model you need to clone this wrapper in your custom nodes and then you need to install the requirements. There is one more step you need to follow in order to set this up. You need to install custom wheel rasterizer for this model and this will only work if you have python 3.12 installed in your system otherwise this won't work. That is because this wheel file has been specifically made with that environment. To install that if you are using portable version of comfy UI you, you need to run this command. Once you followed all of those steps, simply load up Comfy UI and dra drop this workflow inside the workspace. And this is a Hanyuan 3D wrapper workflow. We're simply gonna upload an image over here. I have selected the same image for this one and you need to slightly change something. This tri mesh node is going into the mesh node. I'm gonna remove this and reattach to the tri mesh one. We're gonna do the same one over here. Just Okay, so just simply upload the image over here and click on run. There's also a really cool 3D viewport where you can pan around and see the generated result. I'm, uh, it's gonna generate here in a while. So it has removed the background and created a sort of a depth map over here. And here in the 3D viewport, you can see the generated result. Now this is a really solid looking mesh. And here in the bottom section you can see that it's generating different textures and then applying those textures onto our character. This is the final result we've gotten. So once again really cool this was our input image and this is the 3D mesh we've gotten so far. You can export this in different formats. If you want to 3D print it you're gonna select STL. So that was it for this video. Let me know what cool AI models you guys are playing with and I'll see you in the next one.